guys, I am here with my good friend and the man who gave me an opportunity of a lifetime, director and screenwriter, you know it was, Mr. Ryan McGonagall. Hi, Ryan. Hello. Trust me. Do you remember your first day on set? I absolutely remember my first day on set. Are you kidding me? I was so wide-eyed and bushy-tailed, and I bet they were like, does this girl think she's starring in it? And I was like, no, I'm just excited to set up craft services and, and paint furniture we find off the side of the road. Wasn't it the, the loft scene, right? The Alex loft? It was the loft scene, and because I live in Orange County and we filmed out in L.A., I got there super early. So people were looking at me like, why, who's this girl just standing outside this apartment? And I'm all like excited and I'm like in this <laughs> little area of LA. And I was just, wasn't yeah, it, it was like a pouring rain? It, it was, was pouring, pouring rain. rain. Like, it was pouring you rain. Yep. Yep. It was pouring rain. And I think um, because I didn't really have anywhere to sleep um, because it was so far away. You guys, I think the first time I was there, you guys were like, here's the key. Just sleep for a couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> and then when everyone yeah, started the showing up, I'm all sleeping on this couch of this like sketchy looking apartment. <laughs> I've never felt so alive. And and you were so I have to thank you. You were so I'm so grateful to you for giving me the opportunity. Um and it was perfect timing because and I got laid off my job. And this is a blessing. I think I think two days after I got laid off, you were like, Hey, I'm starting the sequel to Bloody Bobby called Black Pumpkin. <laughs> do you want to work on the movie? And I was like, yes, yes, this is amazing. And from there, like, like so many doors have opened, so many opportunities. And you were right, because I kept asking you, how the heck do I break in? And you were like, you just have to get on set. Freaking go get you coffee and bagels. <laughs> you just show up and wait for them to kick you out and be like, who are you? What are you doing? Put those donuts down. <laughs> Because if you go onto a set, you can always say you're a friend of someone and you're yes. just here to help out and go, oh, okay. <laughs> yes, yes. I have tried that on other productions. It did not work well. <laughs> I have to prove it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, but that was amazing. So that's how, okay, so whenever I, I skyrocket, I will always mm -hmm. credit you for my, my start. But how, was, how you did go. you get started in film? <laughs> um, the PG I, version. I, get asked, I don't know where this is going yeah I, <laughs> I, I get this question asked a lot um I was basically drunk at a Halloween party okay yeah and start I, there. Met, I met some filmmakers and they just got off making Max Neptune and the Menacing Squid in fact I met Kurt that day who was completely drunk on his ass he was um he was dressed up like some cowboy with a mask and he was doing an alternate personality where he was like not Kurt he was this cowboy guy and um he was hitting on my wife I remember that there was like oh guitar God. hero was involved in this thing and Shut yeah up. and like you get talking to these people and they're saying hey you know we just got off making this uh sci-fi movie and um, they told me how much they spent on it. And I go, hey, you should do a horror film. They're like way cheaper and way easier. I really didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> and <laughs> a couple months later, um, they hit me up and they said, hey, what was this horror movie idea you had? So I just came up with something off the top of my head. And that was Bloody Bobby. I love it. I love it. And that was Bloody <laughs> Bobby. Oh, my God. And all this time, like, I'm thinking... Because when you invited me to the premiere, I was like, I think this guy's legit. I get good energy from him. And I'm all, I always feel people's energy, you know. I pray and I'm like, because you know, there's some weirdos out there. Like, when I come to the premiere of my movie, it's at my apartment. No one else will be there. Okay, <laughs> dude. And I went to the premiere of Bloody Bobby. And there was like a thousand people there or something. It was huge. It was organized. It was huge. It was legit. There were other people there. Over the age of 18, I felt safe. <laughs> <laughs> this, was, this is a great start, man. <laughs> well, now um, it, it's funny how, you know, we go down because we did Bloody Bobby, which yeah. is now technically referred to as the Legend of Fall Creek. 
distribution oh. made us change the name for foreign okay. uh, markets. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. And so um, I was surprised when we did the Bloody Bobby premiere, Legend of uh -huh. Fall Creek, I was surprised that people actually wanted to see a sequel. I was so ready just to turn the page, start something fresh. Yeah. And when they kept bringing up the sequel, I'm like, really? Okay. <laughs> like, okay, we can when try you this. Left it, did you leave it open-ended on purpose? Because the way it ended, it was well, one of those movies that, like many of our favorite movies were, the way it ends, you could be like, there's more, right? Or you could be like, oh, man, that's how it ended. Well, it's a horror film, so I don't have to explain anything. That's the yeah, kind of the that. awesomeness of horror. Mm -hmm. You know, you get these people discussing, is there going to be a sequel? What was that ending really about? Yeah. Um, I, I always tell people, like, um, if you watch the ending of the Blair Witch Project, there's okay. still, that movie's 20 plus years old, and people are still debating on message boards the, the last, like, 10 seconds of that film. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, and that's true. true. Some of Let our favorites, that's what we with do. With their own ending, because they could probably do a better job at it than me. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And and as I talk to you, like, because you, you've taught me so much about film. So for people who don't know, I, I obviously have a YouTube channel, but I, I kind of stepped away from my YouTube because I wanted to be a better storyteller. And you have been such a blessing in my life learning about film and, and TV and how and script writing and, and storytelling. And you have so many <laughs> horrific <laughs> movies that you love. Um, and you describe them to me and I'd be like, should I be afraid for my life? <laughs> <laughs> but like, why horror? What, what is it about horror? I mean, there's so many different genres of storytelling out there. What is it about horror that draws you in? Um, I think out of all the films... Um, the genres, horror is the most interactive with the audience. Okay. So okay. With me making it like a drama, right? Mm -hmm. I'm telling a story, which is fine, and there's emotions that I'm pulling out of the audience, but making a horror film, I'm, I'm kind of like in total control. Uh -huh. So I'm just not getting like emotions from you I can get that adrenaline pumping I can get people looking away from the screen being sad laughing um one of the things when people see something horrific they'll laugh so me being in a horror film That's and I don't get the thing. <laughs> if I, yeah, I want mad reactions from the audience and I think I've told you this before my perfect audience would just be a theater full of black women just yelling at the screen constantly <laughs> <laughs> oh my Actually true. Let me tell you something. Growing up in Orange County, seeing um what was it? Um uh This Is Us. I almost said this is us. Um Jordan Peele. Um oh my god, I'm blanking. Uh, not us, the oh. first one. Oh, get out. Get out, hello. Yeah, I grew up in Orange County, that's how black I am. Um seeing that in, in San Clemente and seeing it in Crenshaw are two different experiences. <laughs> two different experiences. <laughs> no, but that's, you know what, now that, now that you say that, you're so right. Because if it's a drama, <laughs> if it's the boy in the striped pajamas, you're not getting all of that reaction. You're crying or you're shaking your head. Like, what the hell? But well, you're not. And also, when you, you can go in a drama. You emotion and horror. You don't want to be in an audience full of a bunch of people showing reactions like crying and stuff and taking you out of the film but in horror yeah. it's it's just the fun house the screen in front of you is just the fun house and we're going through and then 90 minutes later the ride is over so it's all that reaction that you had the whole time is what yeah, makes I, horror fun for me i love that i love that 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 explains it that makes so much sense <laughs> Oh my God. And so I have to ask you on my, on the second note, in the process of filmmaking, 
There's so <laughs> many different people that con- to that contribute. There's so many different positions that contribute. What drew you to directing? That goes back to um, Legend of Fall Creek. So I wrote this script. Um, I helped produce this movie to make it so we're shooting. I raised the money, all that stuff. And Mm -hmm. um, so I I was looking at some old emails that I was sending off to people. And so this started in like 2010, me getting this idea. We didn't go into production until October of 2014. And so you spend wow. all this time thinking you're learning and thinking you know what's best. So you, I hired this director and I had this producer who are veterans uh-huh. helping me out. And they, they screwed the pooch. They made it completely horrible and unwatchable. So <laughs> when it came time to them saying, okay, we're going to make a, a – they want me to write a sequel to this, I, I basically said, okay, I'll, I'll write the sequel, but I have to direct. Because Mm -hmm. um, what I've learned is if anybody's going to fuck up this film, it's going to be me. I'm not going to spend years trying to clean up someone else's mistake. I will take all the responsibility, the glory (laughs) and the fall. You shall have none of it. (laughs) The buck stops here. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel that, though. I feel that. That's a lot of responsibility. And it was, I mean, what, what have you learned about teamwork? Because... I mean, having seen the first film, I was like, wow, this is so legit. Like, like this is so good. The, the, the theater was packed. There were so many people there. Everyone enjoyed it. Everyone was reacting. Like you said, the reactions you wanted. And I was like, it takes some organization and leadership to put a film together. Because when I, when I, when I went on set, I was like, I'll do, I'll do whatever. Like, I'll, I'll get you guys coffee. I'll, do, I'll set up craft services. But um, I was so blessed because I got to do, I got to do, by the way, you let me do so much more than I thought I would be doing. I thought I would just be like setting up crackers and be like, there's water. Y'all want water? Can I look at your script? Can I learn something? There's, there's water. And I was like, I was working in continuity. I was working in set design. Going to green set was, it like brought tears to my eyes, even though it's something that everyone else just did. Like green set is where you get props for like, every movie you can think of you're 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 looking at props and you're like that's how they make that um but it was so organized what have you learned about leadership in in um the filmmaking process well i have learned to um trust the people that you're working with um so when you first you know there's certain filmmakers that are absolute control freaks Mm -hmm. but there's going to be a point for me where you have to let it go you have to trust that these people that you bring on are going to be doing their job. Mm-hmm. And um, like with the next one we're doing, um, the house in the middle of nowhere, I, j- I just brought on a special effects guy. And I said, I'll write the story to lead you up to these effects, but how they look, you're the expert. You're the one that's going to do it all. Wow. I love and that. So, because then you know, like someone can't literally control everything you know you have to trust someone else to bring it you know forward and you know we're in the world we have to make films on the fly 14 days is uh, um, as much time as we have so we have to get all the shots and special (laughs) effects done in 14 days to make our premiere (laughs) oh my gosh oh my gosh that was the the most eye-opening thing was learning that process i remember being in the parking lot at the apartment and um, there's a scene where uh, the, uh, uh, what you hope does, I don't want to give away too much, but Halloween candy has, has its day for sure. Um, and they had to make, make a little something. And I remember being in the parking lot and just watching these makeup artist girls make this prosthetic oh. tongue. And I'm sitting there and I'm watching them. And that was the best part of, of, of being like interning on this film. And I'm watching them make a tongue like that gross things happen to later and I'm like this is so cool but like this is how it happens like we're, we're crouched down next to the um, handicapped parking space like stirring the silicone and she's painting and, and I'm like oh my god is it raining I hope it's not raining because I'm not done with this tongue and it needs to dry and it, it was so um like gorilla it was like gorilla filmmaking I loved it 
And then you get caught up in like the artwork of this gore that they're doing. And yeah. you don't think of it as a, a tongue or a decapitated head because you're looking <laughs> at the artist with all those fine little details. So I have to be careful because I've been bumped on Instagram a couple of times for posting stuff from the movie, like the special effects. And I'll get the warning saying, oh, this has been too graphic. You have to put a warning on this. Can you I take that razor it. split child's tongue off of your yes. Instagram, please? Yes. Always check, check your candy. Always check your candy. <laughs> Heck yeah. And, and even just the process of like, like the people that, I mean, Shada is freaking amazing. She's incredible. But, like, the people who let us use their homes, like, I was like, oh, this is incredible. Like, first of all, this 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 home is exactly what this scene needs. And it, I was like, wow, so this is how it comes together. Like, this this mm -hmm. space that we're in fits. Like, the apartment. The apartment was perfect. And I got, I got you guys, I got to make this, like, board where the guy, like, like obsesses over this case and it's like one of those boards you right. see where it's got arrows here and pictures there. I did that. <laughs> They're like, make it more obsessive, Kimberly. I was like, okay, give me some post-its. <laughs> nice. I, I, I thought that was so cool. And, and once you, how, when you're, when you're, cause you wrote it, mm -hmm. you wrote it. And so when you're um, in the process of directing, how did you learn, like, first, where did you get your education for directing? Because um, I wanted to ask you, how do you learn to just stick to it? Because you, I got so inspired the whole way. And it's like, once you create the set from nothing, you're like, oh, we could do this. And you're like, but that's not in the script. Like, how do you stop yourself from just letting your creativity just spark? Um, yeah, you have to turn it down. Um, you have to shut down that part of you because there's a shot list that you have to get done. Um, through that whole day. So changing things on the fly could be, um, it sounds like a great idea at the moment, but detrimental to the actual script. Um, mm. We actually had a problem on Black Pumpkin where our production um, manager, our line producer, mm -hmm. sent an actress home. So we didn't have her later in the scene. So we had to rewrite a scene without her which when we found out later, all of a sudden there's huge holes like in everything. So we ended up using another day of shooting to now work around this new story arc that was never in the original <laughs> script just to make that day seem somewhat normal that that actress yeah. went home and she wasn't there. Oh, that sucks. That, that stinks. Like yeah. little things like that. Little, it's, it's the little things that it's like, shoot. Mm -hmm. Gosh, where did you learn to direct? I, 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 it's sad to say I did not go to school for it. Um, no, it's not sad I, I, because the movies are, have been amazing. That's not sad. You, you've done a phenomenal <laughs> job. Well, one of the things, like, because we're doing the Kapow Film Festival, you get all yeah. these um, young filmmakers that are sending us films from Chapman and USC and UCLA, New York, all that stuff. And um, I appreciate the technical part of it, mm. like, that they can do. Um and I'm just a storyteller, you know, so I could tell a story. Um, but I'm sure, like, my films lack technical things that if I went to school, I could have. So mm -hmm. there's a part of me that is thankful that I didn't go so I don't have any, like, jaded teacher filling my head that I'll never succeed or anything like that. But <laughs> at, at the same time, I kind of like those technical skills to be able to, you know, know a little bit more about lighting and you know so I could talk to the the grits and all that stuff yeah <laughs> Act like I yeah. Know yeah yeah but I mean some there's great directors that never went to school they just had an imagination yeah like vision but I, I, I that's interesting to me because it's like there's vision and then there's passion and then there's the technical and it's like, really, what you need is, is what I saw from you is, is vision and leadership and trust. Like, you really were trusting. Like, when I worked in the art department, you were like, okay, we need to put a kitchen together. <laughs> <laughs> I was amazed at what we did. I was amazed at what we did. Like, how we, how oh. we put that kitchen together. Yeah, like we, um, no one believes that that kitchen was in a garage. Yes. Yeah. Where so. we found the parts. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, welcome to indie filmmaking. Just find it on the side of the road. That'll work. Oh my god. <laughs> well, how do you how do you get your inspiration? Like, where where did the inspiration for um, uh, the Legend of Creek Falls, shall I say, where did that come from? Because it's 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 scary, but there's such a good story to it. Like, was that a dream? Was that an experience you had with someone? And well, you know, growing up liking horror, um, yeah. My very first horror film was I watched um, on TV, cable television at the time, the original Halloween, and okay. ever since there. You know, John Carpenter and Michael Myers and all that stuff just freaked the hell out of me. Yeah. Um, and then over the years, when they have the, the sequels and the Halloween marathons and all that stuff, you, you get to appreciate it more and more that, that there's an ongoing storyline, you know, to mm -hmm. keep it another movie able to happen. So yeah. I want, like, Bloody Bobby character is just like my um, love letter to John Carpenter's Halloween. Okay. Uh, Okay, cool. Oh, I love that. I love that. I like that. And then, like that. And, then and then Kurt Well, then Kurt took it with the whole another step and worked with me on making an urban legend. So for years we still have this urban legend floating around of the ghost of Robert Maxwell. So and then with us doing Black Pumpkin where um, Bobby actually looks kind of different, I think yeah. is a good step because now it's almost like you're getting the different variations of what people see of him. So yeah. I think it's kind of cool. Will we do a third one? I don't know, but. Um. I was just about to ask you that. <laughs> because that's the cool thing about urban legends is that, is that you can keep them coming back and keep them coming back. Mm -hmm. And this one's different because it's got kids in it. That's what I liked. Um, because one of the things that I thought lacked in legend of fall creek was um he's just killing people in their 20s and 30s yeah if you're gonna kill people on halloween or haunt people on halloween halloween is kind of a kid holiday Who's so let's be put out them there yeah yeah and so i pulled a lot of inspiration from the movie gremlins and goonies where i tried to keep the action more fast paced and more 80s style and when it was all said and done, that's the part of the film I enjoyed the most. Like, I, I really think I made the right choice by sticking to that 80s vibe. And I, um, I kind of found my, my way of filmmaking through that. Like, just go with what inspired you and made you passionate about um, being a filmmaker. What, what movies freaked you out or got you excited when you were a kid? Try to do the same thing. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> And you're and you're still developing concepts like you're still developing things outside of uh, outside of um, uh, what is it what, Creek Falls? What is it? Creek Falls? Fall, <laughs> Fall Creek Valley. Fall Creek Valley. Even though the the sign Fall Creek Valley, I want that sign. I, I feel like we should pass the street sign around. Everybody should be able to have it for two I months. Think the, the sign is still in Shada's uh, garage. Really. I want it. Yeah. <laughs> I want it. What other things are you developing? Or so, are you um, interested in developing? The, the, um, what I learned as, you know, doing Kapow and making films is, um, so we do the Kapow Intergalactic Film Festival and yeah. we're going into our fifth year. Amazing. And I, yeah, I've had two of those years. I had one of my movies show there. And I realized doing this film festival that I like the, doing the film festival a lot more when I'm showing something. Yeah. Like, it's cool that there's a party, but when I don't show anything, it kind of feels like I'm throwing a party for other people to, like, party it. What about me? Yeah, you're yeah. like, what about Ryan? Right? As selfish care. as that sounds, yeah. <laughs> uh, so anyway, at the, I realized this when we premiered Black Pumpkin a couple uh -huh. years ago. So um, I go, I'm just going to have something ready to go. So I pitched an idea to Shada on the house in the middle of nowhere on basically one jump scare. And because she's Shada, she yeah. loved the idea. Yay, so. we love Shada. <laughs> and then we just ran off, you know, ran and did that one and, and promoted it and got some funding, did a... Um, crowdfunding campaign, but of course, because of the our little situation with the coronavirus, 
everything yeah. got put on hold. God love it. So, uh, <laughs> God love it. God so, love it. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's interesting. I want to, I want that, that, well, first the title just sounds amazing. So now I'm like really interested to see like, I, come on, Rona. You've had your chance. <laughs> Leave. <laughs> I wonder how well, many films. Well, what have you I wonder if, like, how many kids' names are going to be variations of coronavirus. Because nine months from now, there's going to be a baby boom. There is. <laughs> there's totally going to be a baby boom. There absolutely <laughs> will be a baby boom. Yes. Ronisha. And this is how I... <laughs> I claim it, Ronisha. Corona. Um, <laughs> Rona. Rona's <laughs> actually kind of a cool name. It reminds me of um, Ramona Quimby. Like, I like that name. <laughs> he is over there. But what is it? What is it that you hope, either socially in in society or creatively, what is it you hope good will come out of this pandemic? Well, the what I think will happen is. Um, if we all do what we're supposed to do and we do the social distancing, this yeah. thing will run its course. Yeah. And um, the the less of the body count, the better. Yeah. Um, I think we have to not be selfish and do what we're supposed to do as like a community. And um, I'm in a community here where it's spread out. And I see, I see people doing that. I see people going, being kind. I see message boards where people are offering to go to the store for people and stuff like that. And that. if they're running out of toilet paper, they're literally bringing stuff and dropping it on their, their doorstep. Yeah. So there's a lot of good. Um, I hope politically this wakes us up on how stupid we cannot be when it comes to just ignoring a situation yeah. and just expecting it to go away. Um, mm -hmm. Like, like they, there was the hashtag, you know, go, I'm not willing to, um, or die for the doubt. People that didn't want to die just to keep the economy up and Wall Street going. Yeah. So I hope, hope that that wakes us up. And when we get out of it, I honestly think when we get out of this, um, we're going to go to baseball games and baseball games will be sold out. Every movie theater will have a shitload of people in it. Yeah. Restaurants will you know, reservations only. It's just going to be packed. We're going to be so wanting to go outside. Yeah. And then the Kapow Film Festival for for students or or filmmakers that um, make what kind of films? Tell us Any about kind of Kapow film? and how we can get involved. So um, www.kapowiff.com. Um, we've been doing it. This will be our fifth year. And um, we actually pushed this, this one, one back to be in January. So this will be in January 2021 Great. Um, in North Hollywood. But the more exciting part of all this is, is because we got so big, we had to start um, not accepting as many films. So yeah. Seven day event. Um, we, we had to like trim back, like people weren't getting their films in. So I decided that I was gonna go back to our original location in Corona, Dos Lagos, and oh, yeah. do another film festival six months after. So now the um, the Kapal Intergalactic Film Festival is now part of our film festival circuit. So in October of 2021, there's um, the Film and Mike Film Festival, which will be in Dos Lagos, um, and it'll be a three to four day event. And we're going to do the, the actors will do the script read. We're going to have three days of you know, films, a um, couple Q and A's and um, yeah, really focus and make sure more people are involved and um, spreading it out. I think when you stay in one location, even though Hollywood's great, you, you still are only getting a certain amount of people. I think with us spreading out, we could probably get, you know, families of people from Chapman, you know, cause Orange County is like right, you know, over the hill. And then yeah. we have, um, colleges out here so i'm excited you know film of might is mainly going a little bit more back to basics okay. um kapow will still be our marquee awards type show but yeah that. now we're doing two because i don't have enough things to worry about as the year Good. goes by <laughs> right i love it i love it and you guys uh, it, kapow was my first film festival experience and um it's so organized the submissions, I don't know how you guys pick them because 
I, I, I hosted the red carpet for last year's, which thank you again, by the way, for letting me do that. And I got to do interviews with filmmakers. You guys, a lot of those interviews are um, on season three of What's Good Kimberly, so you can check them out. Um, but um, I was moved by so many of these films. There were a lot of sci-fi films. There was some horror. There were just some thought-provoking, just interesting stories that were based on true stories. Um, you know, the film festival was incredible. It's so well organized. The team that puts it on is Ryan and his team. They're so passionate and they're so organized and they care so much about the filmmakers. So I encourage you guys, I'm going to link you below Ryan. Um, so I'm going to link Kapow, the film festival. So people know where to put their entries and, and how to get involved. Thank you so much, Ryan. Well, thank you. And stay creative during this time. You Absolutely. know, we're, we're all stuck. You have to stay creative. Please check out his films. I'm going to link his information below of how you can check out what Ryan is up to. Keep up to date with it. Please, please get involved with Kapow. And you guys stay safe out there and take care. Thanks so much, Ryan. <laughs> Bye. Bye.